Hi there, Andy here. So let's talk about the electro electro magnetic spectrum. Oh, electromagnetic spectrum. So for the MCAT, um, you for the, at least the chemistry section you have a pretty convenient way of uh, calculating energy. So E's energy is equal to HF. Now H is Planck's constant. Let me spell that. Planck's constant, which is a constant number that if you have any equation, they should give it to you. And F is frequency. In unit, which units are hertz or one over second. And so frequency is also related to, let's write another equation, frequency is equal to C divided by um, gamma. C is the speed of light. I'm sorry, <laughs> and this isn't gamma. Um, this is the wavelength, so uh, lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. In meters, and speed of light is in meters per second. Um, so just be aware of this relationship. So if we wanted to write this out all the way, we could say energy is equal to Planck's constant times um, C divided by lambda. And so we know, let's do a little exercise, we know that um, C is meters per second divided by meters. And we know that energy is in joules. So what would be the units of H? You know, you probably never get a problem like this, but this is a good exercise so you to make sure that you understand the relationship. Um, so meters per second divided by meters is what? It just hertz, right? So 1 over seconds. And so something times 1 over second is equal to joules. So we could say joules, joule seconds. Although this isn't the usual um, uh, units given to it. Uh, makes sense because joules seconds times 1 over second is equal to joules. So, but in any case, you'll be given Planck's constant um, and its units if you ever need to use it in a calculation. So that's a basic idea. You should have these memorized anyway for uh, the physics section. But something we want to add on here specific, I, I think more so specific to chemistry, is the electromagnetic spectrum. So, electro-EM spectrum. And what exactly is this? These are the different wavelengths. Let's draw it in red. That uh, and frequencies we have that describe um, electromagnetic energy. So, what do we mean by this? In the center, we're going to have visible light. And you should know the mon mon uh, mnemonic, Roy G. Biv. R is red, O orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Roy G. Biv. Commit that to memory. It's a nice mnemonic. Where we have red is a longer wavelength, so this side is going to be longer wavelength, and this side is going to be shorter wavelength. Just lambda. So Roy G. Biv, memorize that. Now on either side we also need to memorize the order of the different types of electromagnetic energy. Now uh, on the longer wavelength side I find the mon mon <laughs> mnemonic uh, RMI, like the medical testing that you'll hopefully be able to do as a professional. 
um, it's usually MRI, but for some reason I associated RMI, and this stands for radio um, waves, microwaves, and infrared waves. So, radio, micro, and infrared. Radio, micro, infrared. So, RMI. Uh, to me, that mnemonic just works. Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. See, check it out. On the other end of the spectrum, literally the spectrum, uh, where we have shorter wavelengths, I always think of it as just the, the last letters of the alphabet, U, um, X, Y. And so U is for ultraviolet, ultra, X is for X-ray, and why it's not really why it's a, it's a lambda, um, but it looks like a Y, so I say uh, lambda rays. Uh, so you definitely need to know the order of these parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, and hopefully these mnemonics uh, help you remember them. So let's do another little exercise. We know that this side has a longer wavelength and this side has a shorter wavelength. Wavelength. What does that say about our frequencies? Well, remember from up here, we have a relationship between frequency and wavelength, and this relationship basically says that the frequency is inversely propor proportional to the wavelength. So a shorter wavelength would mean a higher frequency, and a longer wavelength would mean a lower frequency. And so let's go back and look at our equation over here that energy, well, right, right here, energy is proportional to frequency, right? So we just kind of ignore Planck's constant. We look at the relationship between energy and frequency. We can say that a higher frequency uh, electromagnetic wave is a higher energy. So higher energy and lower energy. And so this kind of makes sense. These X-rays have more energy than something like a radio wave that, you know, gets sent out from radio towers. If those had more energy, if the radio waves instead had more energy, which isn't the case, then, you know, maybe those would be frying our brains every time we talk on a cell phone. So, if you keep that in mind, I think that helps keep things in perspective, and then you should definitely develop at least some sort of mnemonic. Try to use mine if they make sense to you, um, but definitely feel free to to make up your own RMI, Roy G. Biv, and UXY, like the end of the alphabet, and this will help you keep the electromagnetic spectrum in perspective. Now let's look at an example problem uh, of, you know, something you could see on the MCAT where you would really need to know uh, about the electromagnetic spectrum. So let's say you have three different electron transitions. You have 5 to 2, 4 to 2, and 3 to 2. And you're asked to assign colors. Purple, or let's say a indigo, green, and red. So you're supposed to associate these colors with um, the different electron transition uh, jumps. So in another video we talked about how the greater the jump, uh, the more energy. So this, so 5 to 2 is going to have a greater energy change, so this is going to be the, you know, the greatest, compared to these other two, whereas 3 to 2 is going to have the lowest change in energy, and 4 to 2 is going to have the mid change of energy. And so we know, you know, that this has the greatest energy change, mid and lowest, and we can associate those energy changes with the electromagnetic spectrum. So if we look at these three colors, indigo, according to what we drew here, has the greatest energy, let's draw a different color, has the greatest energy, green is kind of in the middle between red and indigo. It has mid energy 
and then red is closer to our left with a lower frequency and thus a lower energy. And so if we wanted to connect these, we could say, well, indigo has the greatest energy, so it's the greatest energy change. Green is the mid energy, and red has the lowest energy. And so you can associate these different colors um, with these electron transitions. And it's not just these colors. If you you know were asked a way to talk about you know radio waves versus X-ray waves, you need to know which has more energy and which has less, and how they relate to different electronic transitions.